good afternoon. I'm uh, Fair Aid, and that's really good because we've hit the W's now, so we're yeah. very, very close to yeah. <laughs> um, So my research is investigating the role of gas heating engineers in shaping um, the certain heating technologies that are installed in homes and how these are used by building rockets. So I'd like to thank Ashley and uh, Orash as well for introducing this topic wonderfully with their heating control discussions. Um, my research is important because space heating is the single largest contributor to the energy consumed in a domestic building. Advanced heating controls, a programmer, a room thermostat and thermostatic radiator valves are recommended to reduce the energy consumed through heating systems. However, evidence shows that these controls are often not used in their intended way. We need to understand why this is and what might be done to promote more efficient use of central heating if we're to reduce the energy that these systems consume. Now, in both academic and policy contexts, the installers of domestic central heating have not previously been investigated as potential influences of domestic heating practices. My research uses an ethnographic approach to explore the role of domestic heating engineers in this process. This has included shadowing the installers while they fit systems in homes and interviewing installers about their installation practices. Because installation is a point at which technology, human actors, installers and users, documentation and regulation all come together, this discussion is framed by actor network theory, the core principle of which is the lack of distinction between human and non-human actors in a network. Within this, non-humans are attributed agency, that is, they have the ability to influence the actions of those in the network. And I want you to bear that in mind whilst I go forward with this talk. So, a typical central heating <coughs> renovation or installation involves several stages. These are a quotation, where the installer assesses the work, the physical installation of the system, and finally, to meet the regulations, the installer is required to test the system and um, explain its operation to the householder through the commissioning process. It's this commissioning process that I wish to problematise today. The commissioning process involves the completion of a commissioning checklist, this is a grey A4 form that's included at the end of the manufacturer's instruction book. Um, this sheet includes the completion of technical information, for example, carbon monoxide emissions, um, gas flow rates to the, to the boiler, but also there are elements that involve the customer. So the commissioning checklist falls under the benchmark scheme, which is managed by the Heating and Hot Water Industry Council, or the HHIC. Now, according to the HHIC website, if the installer is benchmark registered, then they will be required to ensure that they give a full and clear explanation or demonstration of the product and system and its operation to you, the customer. Hand over the manufacturer's user instructions to you on completion of the installation and obtain your signature to record that the product demonstration and handover have been completed. So this is actually manifested on the commissioning checklist itself, our A4 sheet. Um, which includes a tick box to confirm that, and I quote, the operation of the boiler and system controls have been demonstrated and understood by the customer. And a space for the customer's signature at the end of the form, which states um, that the satisfactory demonstration and receipt of the manufacturer's literature has been completed. So, we have a document that has the role <coughs> of making sure the system has been explained to the customer. How effective is this in prescribing the actions of the installer? That is, ensuring that the system is actually explained and that the customer is consequently able to use their central heating. So, um, a little bit of my data now. This is a commissioning check sheet that has been completed. Um, as you can see, it hasn't been signed by the customer to say that they've had um, the necessary documentation or demonstration. <coughs> I've also included two quotes from my respondents. Um, both of these are heating engineers. And I've included both. They hopefully provide quite a balanced picture. So the first one says, um, you have to make sure the controls are working correctly and you have, you have to explain everything to the tenant and they have to sign the benchmark as well. Whilst the second one says, I mean, you, the commissioning book says at the bottom of their signature, but to be honest, hardly anybody ever does it. But you can do. I don't know why you want their signature because they've got all your details anyway when you commission them. So really... I'm not trying to say here that installers aren't explaining systems, because a lot of the time they do. But what I'm questioning is, what's the role of this document, this single document that says on it that customers should be receiving this advice and is not being completed? Um, now, the technical element of this document is often completed in full. The, the measurements are made, the, they're written down. However, this 
element that involves the customer just seems to get overlooked slightly within the document itself. So my question is, is this document effective in ensuring that householders receive the information? Um, just to briefly conclude, it's important to understand the role of installers in shaping space heating, but in turn the role of the wider industry. That's both the human and the non-human actors within it. Um, these each be to install the practices, and what we need to look at is how effective or not these may be. Thank you.